In this video, I'm going to break down the three main causes for blurry or soft photos and teach you how to correct them. So the three culprits of blurry images are the following. Number one, movement blur controlled by your shutter speed. Number two, depth of field blur controlled by your aperture. And finally, number three, blur caused by missing your focal point, which is actually closely related to your depth of field and aperture. Now, if you're thinking, great, I have no idea what she's talking about. Keep watching, I'll explain. Number one, movement blur. You know when you go to take a photo of your child, but they're running around and all you end up with is a big smear that kind of resembles them? Let me explain why this happens with some examples. First of all, your shutter speed controls how long light is allowed to enter your lens. Shutter speed is measured in seconds or more accurately, fractions of a second. In this image, the shutter on my lens was open so long and let in so much light that my camera sensor was able to capture the entire motion of my daughter moving. If I use a faster shutter speed, my lens essentially blinks faster and is only able to capture a small snippet of that moment of her moving. If your photos look like they are blurry due to movement, consider using a faster shutter speed, shortening the amount of time light can reach your sensor and be recorded. I recommend 1 500th of a second for certainty, but you can usually feel pretty safe around 1 over 200 if your subject is relatively still. If you're working with kids, go ahead and bump that up. Stick to 1 over 500 or faster. If you're in an auto mode on your mode dial and can't seem to catch a shutter speed that fast, you need more light. Number two, depth of field blur. The second type of blur you may see in an image has to do with your depth of field, which is controlled by your aperture setting. This is typically a desirable blur. Have you ever wondered how photographers get that creamy bokeh or blurred out background effect? Your aperture setting can create the bokeh because it is responsible for the depth of field in your image. And this is all about to sound like gibberish, but I'm gonna cover the important parts that you need to know about aperture. Aperture controls the size of the opening in your lens that is letting in light, and it functions a lot like your own pupil. The narrower an aperture you use, the deeper your depth of field will be and the further you can see into your image. The wider your aperture is open, the shallower your depth of field is, and the more bokeh or background blur is created. If you want more bokeh, try opening your lens aperture as wide as it can go and pull your subject away from the background. A wide aperture can look like f1.2 to f4.0, depending on your lens. Not all lenses are created equal and every lens has its own maximum aperture, which will tell you how wide it can go. Number three, focus errors. The third type of blurry photo is one that has a focal error, and I would say this is actually the most common type of blur issue. Every photographer knows the struggle of an image that is out of focus. You typically want the subject to be the clearest part of your image so that your viewer's eye is drawn there. It can be tricky to get a perfectly focused image for so many reasons, even if you're using autofocus. Did you know there are different autofocus modes your camera can utilize? These modes change the way your camera reacts when you engage the autofocus, usually by pressing your shutter button halfway down. On top of that, there are different autofocus area modes for you to tell your camera where you want it to look for something to focus on. On top of that, on top of that, <laughs> again, you are probably like me and usually photographing wiggly subjects, which just makes it harder. My advice to practice using autofocus correctly is to try using continuous autofocus mode and a large focus area for a moving subject. Use one shot and a selective focus area point when your subject can stand still. Hopefully this video helps you start to correct or achieve the right kind of blur in your images. 
If it was helpful for you, I would love to hear. Please drop some comments for me on the video. And if you want to learn more, I would love to see you subscribe. Thanks so much for watching.